Hello students, our next topic is Physics in Rotating Coordinate System. In the previous section, we have treated uh, physics in a linearly accelerating system. So, in the above uh, sections, the uniformly accelerations were in the linear accelerating systems. So, uh, now we are moving into more complicated problems with rotating coordinate system. So, there is an acceleration which is not linear, but the coordinate system itself is rotating. In our example 9.1, uh, which is the one in which a vehicle, uh, in which there is a bob is hanging and it is accelerating linearly. In that example, we have seen that we can use either inertial system or can treat them as non-inertial system. So, in inertial system, we can hold Newton's law, but in non-inertial systems, we should include the non-physical fictitious force MA. So, we can treat this problem just like a problem in an inertial system if we include the fictitious force. Right? So, the linearly accelerating systems are very much similar to inertial systems if we include the fictitious force minus MA term. Now, if you try to treat the motion in a rotating coordinate system from the standpoint, f uh, standpoint of an inertial frame, we should include two fictitious forces which are called centrifugal force and Coriolis force. So, if we include these two fictitious forces, we can treat the motion in a rotating coordinate, rotating coordinate system as if we are in inertial system. That is what we are going to treat in this section. So, we are adding these two fictitious forces along with the true force or the real force so that we get the same relation as in inertial system. So, the surface of earth is an excellent example for the rotating coordinate system and using fictitious forces we will be able to explain the observations of earth. Right? So, there are some examples like for Coles pendulum which we will be dealing it in this chapter itself and the circular nature of weather systems also. So, we can treat the rotating coordinate systems in this section. So, in this section, we will be finding out what is the rate of change of a rotating vector. So, we consider a vector B, B of t which is rotating about this axis omega which is the rate at which it is rotating or it is the rotational velocity vector in the direction n cap. So, this is our vector rotating about this axis and the vector makes an angle alpha with this axis. Okay. So, omega the vector velocity vector omega is equal to omega n cap and alpha is the angle between b and omega. Now, we have sketched b of t and after a time delta t, the vector is here b of t plus delta t. The tip of b sweeps out a circular path with radius b sin alpha. So, how do you get this term? Actually, this is a right triangle here it is a 90 degree at angle so so this is the opposite side so according to this alpha term sin alpha and from that you get this side opposite side as b sin alpha which is the radius of the circle which is swept by the vector b okay so b sin theta is the radius and the plane of the circle is perpendicular to n cap now, in a time delta t, the tip of B sweeps through an angle omega delta t. This is the angle through which after a time delta t, this sweeps an angle omega delta t. How you get this term omega delta t? So, omega is the angular displacement by time. It is angular velocity. Rotational velocity means it is the angular velocity. So, it is the angle turned by time is omega. So, this angle is equal to omega into delta t which is the angular displacement. So, this is omega delta t. 
Now consequently, the tip of B moves by an angle, uh, so, uh, an amount delta B. So the tip has moved an amount delta B. So what is this value? We know that R by radius is angle. Right? So delta B is equal to approximately B sin theta in B sin alpha into omega delta T. Therefore, what is the rate of change of B? dB by dt is equal to limit delta t tends to 0 B sin alpha omega delta t by delta t. On cancelling delta t you get dB by dt the rate of change of B vector B is equal to B sin alpha omega. Now B sin alpha omega can be written as the modulus of omega cross B. Can expand the cross product as omega B sin alpha. Why it is not B cross omega? You can find that alpha is an angle taken from omega to, towards B. So omega B sine of the angle, that angle should be between omega and beta from omega to B. B. So it is not B cross omega. This equation holds for omega cross B. Right now, what is the direction of that vector, resultant vector? Now you can see that delta b is perpendicular to b as well as n. Okay, so you can write perfectly as dB by dt is equal to omega cross b, the cross product of the vector velocity vector omega and b. So this result holds true for any vector that undergoes pure rotation around an axis n at a rate omega. So dB by dt is this relation omega cross b. This relation is true for any vector b which is ax rotating at a rate omega about an axis n. So you can take this relation as a as an operator. Okay. Now we are going to find out what is the time derivative of a vector in a rotating coordinate system. So we have to find out what is the variation of a, any vector v, any vector c. We are considering a vector c here. We are going to find out what is the time derivative of that vector in a rotating coordinate system. So we consider the vector c. Its rate of change in an inertial frame is dc by dt as in observed in inertial system. Our problem is to find the time derivative of dc by dt in the rotational frame. So our system is rotating at a rate omega. Now let us find, uh, take the basis vectors as i, j, k in the inertial system and i dash, j dash and k dash in the rotating system. So in the inertial system c vector, vector c and its time derivatives are you write the vector c as cxi plus cya plus c Z, c Z k. It is actually c z k. And uh, what is the rate of change of c dc by dt in inertial frame that is equal to dcx by dt into i plus dcy by dt into j plus dc dc c z by dt into k. Now take the components of c in the rotating system as c is equal to cx dash i dash plus cy dash j dash plus cz dash k dash. So in calculating the time derivative of dc by dt rotation, we have to f find out what is di dash by dt. We know that since the system itself is rotating, all the basis vectors will be rotating at this angular velocity. So from this equation which have, uh, we have learned earlier, any vector b rotating at an rate omega, d by dt of that vector will be equal to omega cross b. Therefore, d by dt of i dash is equal to omega cross i dash, dj dash by dt is equal to omega cross j dash and dk dash by dt is equal to omega cross k dash. Okay, now we substitute these terms. So, what is dc by dt? That is equal to dcx dash by dt into i dash plus dcy dash by dt into j dash plus dc dash uh, cz dash k dash by dt plus 
cx dash di dash by dt cy dash dj dash by dt cz dash dk dash by dt so this term this first term is nothing but dc by dt in the rotating frame right since i dash j dash k dash are the coordinates in the rotating system the first term on the right hand side is the rate of change of c which is observed in the rotating system now we have to find out what is the second term you know di dash by dt dj dash by dt and dk dash by dt we substitute that in this term second term so we get so we get the second term as cx dash omega cross i di dash by dt is substituted as omega cross i then here omega cross j here omega cross k so taking all the omegas out, outside omega cross cx dash i dash plus cy dash j dash plus cz dash k, k dash this is nothing but the vector c so second term you get the second term as omega cross c combining those results you get dc by dt in the inertial frame that is equal to dc by dt in the rotational frame plus an extra term omega cross c so this equation holds for any vector so you can easily remember this equation in the form of an operator like del operator you can treat this as this, this can be taken as a rule as d by dt of any vector in inertial frame is equal to d by dt in rotation rotational frame plus omega cross what is the vector write it here so you operate this operator on the vector so by this transformation you can relate the inertial and the rotating frames now we will be using this transformation to find the expressions for velocity and acceleration in the rotating system now what is the velocity and acceleration in the rotating system so we take the position vector r so what is the variation in the position vector r you take the our uh, operator rule d by dt of inertial is equal to d by dt rotational plus omega cross dash so we operate it on the position vector r you get dr by dt in inertial frame is equal to d by r by dt in rotational frame plus omega cross r so what is this one that is velocity in the inertial frame this is the velocity in the rotational frame plus omega cross r this is the equation relating velocities in inertial and the rotating frames okay now uh, if we once again operate this equation you use this equation you get the acceleration so d by dt of v in in inertial frame that is equal to dv uh, in by dt in the rotational frame plus omega cross v in okay so uh, the right hand side is d by dt of v in is substituted as v rotational plus omega cross r plus omega cross v in as substituted as v rotation plus omega cross r on expanding you get the first term dv rotational by dt in the rotational frame plus omega cross omega is a constant vector so there is no derivatives so omega cross dr by dt rotational plus omega cross v rotational plus omega cross r so that is equal to the same term you get this is nothing but v rotational so you get two terms like 2 omega cross v rotational plus omega cross omega cross r okay so in terms of acceleration you can write it as acceleration in the inertial frame that is equal to a rotational plus 2 omega cross v rotational plus omega cross omega cross r or the acceleration viewed in the rotating system a rotational is equal to a inertial minus 
2 omega cross V rotational minus omega cross omega cross R. This is the acceleration viewed in the rotational system. So this is the acceleration in the real frame or the true acceleration and these two are the fictitious forces which we will be dealing in detail in the next topic.